What is up everybody, Tensa here with a new episode of Real Horror. Today begins my month of top tens as I count down my favorite horror films from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I thought it would be a nice switch up from the standard review. Don't worry, I'll get back to them sooner than you may think, but I wanted to take some time to decompress and do something different. As you can see, I'm starting with the horror of the 1970s. This is the decade where you began to see a shift in the genre. The country's anxieties were being reflected on the big screen between the loss of faith in the government, economy, and tradition traditional family and religious values. Not to mention you had the Vietnam War going on and Americans were able to see the rather intense violence going on over there right in their living rooms thanks to the evolved media coverage. Directors including Wes Craven, Toby Hooper, and George Romero were able to respond to these new heightened senses of fear and push the envelope in the horror genre. So what films from that era do I consider my favorite? Let's take a look. My number 10 is Nicholas Rogue's 1973 thriller, Don't Look Now. After the accidental death of their daughter Christine, grieving parents John and Laura Baxter head to Venice, Italy, but after a psychic woman insists she's spoken with the spirit of Christine, John begins to see what appears to be his daughter running through the streets of Italy. This is a film that I have always seen make a lot of top horror lists, but I only just got around to watching it recently. I wanted to see what the big deal was, and I would say it's pretty good, but not entirely my taste. It's a very art house style of filmmaking and honestly feels like more of a drama with the horror not really kicking in until the end. It's gorgeous to look at since it was indeed shot on location in Venice. The cinematography and score give it a very dreamlike flow throughout. You're not quite sure what's going on at times and feel like you may be going crazy similar to Donald Sutherland's character John. He and Julie Christie put on great performances of two parents still dealing with the death of their daughter but one tries to remain hopeful in her spirit while the other is skeptical. While all this is going on around them there are murders within the town and the reveal at the end is odd but it catches you off guard as you realize the clues throughout that predicted a character's fate very well made and acted but absolutely a slow burn Number 9 is Richard Donner's 1976 The Omen. Politician Robert Thorne and his wife Catherine adopt little Damien after their own child was stillborn. However, five years later, strange events begin to occur, with Damien at the center of all of them. Investigations lead Robert to believe that his adopted son may actually be the Antichrist. One of the most memorable movies in the creepy kid subgenre, and deservedly so. It's also likely the second most famous film from the 70s that dealt with a child and the devil. It can be very eerie and surprisingly graphic with some of its kills. Damien's fifth birthday party has one of the freakiest deaths I've seen, but there's also a freaking decapitation that totally comes out of nowhere. Gregory Peck as Robert does well as he tries to uncover the truth about what the hell is happening because of this little pale kid of his. When he does discover the horrifying truth surrounding his birth, it comes to an exciting climax that has you wondering how you should feel about the actions he needs to take before the shocking ending. The creepy atmosphere and characters, along with the great mystery built around Damien, makes this a necessary watch for horror fans. My number 8 is George Romero's 1978 Dawn of the Dead. As the Walking Dead begin to overrun the country, four survivors, Stephen, Francine, Peter, and Roger, take it upon themselves to travel by helicopter to find refuge, eventually deciding to hold up in a shopping mall to escape the hordes of the undead. This is one of the ultimate zombie films, but that's not a shocker since it comes from Romero, the guy who essentially created the subgenre in 1968 with Night of the Living Dead. He usually made social commentary with his films, and in Dawn, the most blatant one is he was trying to point out American consumerism and how we're pretty much slaves or zombies to it. I like that he had something to say underneath the story and violence going on. However, the gore effects were kicked up a notch since night thanks to the legend himself, Tom Savini. While the makeup on the zombies looks fairly outdated, the bloodshed and kills actually work, even with the real bright red paint looking substance used for blood. The characters are what drive this to make this stand out among the infinite amount of zombie movies out there. It's only the four, pilot Steven, his pregnant girlfriend Francine, and SWAT team officers Peter and Roger, but it's fun to get to know them and watch them slowly form a camaraderie as they try to fortify and clean up their mall safe haven. You're rooting for them to hold out together because of how likable they are, so when they're faced with some difficult situations, you feel upset. The finale is an insane battle with an opposing group, along with zombies overrunning the mall once more, and in all honesty, it ends fairly bleak, but that always seems to be the case with zombie films. If you're a fan of this subgenre, it's an absolute must watch. My number seven is Bob Clark's 1974 
Black Christmas. As their winter break begins, a group of sorority sisters begin receiving vulgar anonymous phone calls. When one sister goes missing and a local girl is murdered, housemates Jess and Barb don't realize that the events could be related and that the culprit is closer to them than they expect. This is an underrated gem in the slasher genre that goes unnoticed too often. While many, including myself, like to attribute the boom in slasher movies to Halloween, it's Black Christmas that essentially established the template for the genre. Characters getting picked off one by one by an unknown killer set around a holiday. The villain, who simply is referred to as Billy, is frightening during his phone calls to the sorority. I mean, the first call within the first couple minutes is quite disgusting, and it only gets worse as he continues. They're so creepy as he sounds like some schizophrenic yelling profane obscenities in multiple voices, and when you find out how he's been making the calls, it makes your heart stop. Setting it around Christmas is what makes it a little scarier since it's a holiday that's supposed to spread love, joy, harmony, and all that jazz but it's all disrupted by this maniac on the loose, turning it into a nightmare. With all this going on, there is a subplot between Jess and her boyfriend Peter, as she's pregnant with his child, but doesn't want to keep it while he does. It's obviously a touchy subject now, always has been, but they're very open about it here. So open about it that when Billy repeats something she said to Peter in a private conversation about the situation, it's absolutely frightening. Billy gets in some good kills that I don't want to spoil, but all I'll say is Glass Unicorn. It also ends on an incredibly haunting note that will give you the chills. Slasher fans need to watch this one because if they believe Halloween is the grandfather to the genre, Black Christmas is certainly the great-grandfather. My number six is Brian De Palma's 1976 Carrie. In an adaptation of Stephen King's novel, outcast teen Carrie White is relentlessly tormented by her classmates and crazy religious mother. She slowly starts to notice that occurrences around her can be attributed to the fact that she has psychic powers. After being asked to prom by the sympathetic Tommy Ross, she drops her guard, unfortunately leading to the prom night from hell. This was actually the first King book to get an adaptation, and it's always been a gold standard for how it should be done. It's probably one of De Palma's best directorial jobs. It shot so so beautifully by Mario Tosi as it has this dreamlike haze to it, and the performances are excellent. Sissy Spacek plays Carrie so well as she is just so pathetic throughout most of the movie and the poor girl deserves none of the abuse she receives. When she starts noticing her supernatural abilities, you can see her try to take small steps in becoming less of a pushover, especially against her insane mother Margaret, played extraordinarily by Piper Laurie. Her obsession with religion and Jesus make her extremely creepy, and that's before you watch her go batshit it crazy by the end. These two were so good that they even received Academy Award nominations for their performances, which is almost unheard of for actors in a horror film. The highlight of the film is of course the prom sequence. Carrie is finally happy for once in her miserable life, but one little prank sends her into a blind rage and she unleashes absolute chaos. It's an amazingly iconic scene that I think is effectively scary and looks amazing for a 1970s film. There's also a surprise shock at the end that scared the hell out of audiences back then and can and garner a jump from viewers today. It's a beautiful movie that builds a dream into an absolute nightmare. My number five is William Freakin's 1973, the Exorcist. When a young girl, Reagan, becomes possessed by a demon, her mother resorts to enlisting the help of two priests to save her daughter and remove the evil from within her. This is consistently referred to as the scariest movie ever made, and for good reason. I don't think many people find it as scary these days since the whole possession thing is overplayed, but in 1973, people were horrified, literally running out of the theater, vomiting, and fainting. I don't like it, I wanna go home. That's my heart beat too fast. No. Why? No. It's probably the grossest thing I've ever seen. Oh, it's weird. She turned her head around. <laughs> she turned her head around. When I watch this, I usually put myself in that mind frame from the 70s, and I wholeheartedly agree that it's frightening. Things start out fine for Reagan and her mother, but after she pulls out that damn Ouija board, it's all downhill as the changes in health and attitude begin to become apparent. Some of the scary shit happens even before she's possessed, when we see her in the hospital going through unsettlingly real depictions of hospital treatment. But then, you know, she starts acting strange, talking at different voices, doing unspeakable things with a crucifix, and spewing green slime on priests. The slow transformation is terrifying, and you begin to wonder, if something this horrible could happen to an innocent little girl, could it happen to me? 
Now, that may only be the case if you believe in that kind of stuff, but the mother in the movie was a skeptic too. She desperately wants to help her daughter, so it's sad to watch her break down throughout and go from thinking it's a mental issue to truly believing something is controlling her. Shows that even when you're not a believer, there are certain events that can't be explained and drive you to the point of believing just about anything to get the help you need. There's also the young priest, Father Karras, who goes through his own character arc after the death of his mother and questions his faith. When it's finally time for him to get to the actual exorcism, he struggles to maintain composure, but makes the ultimate move to save Reagan. The entire exorcism scene itself is scary as hell, with Karis and Father Marin having to deal with a fully demonized Reagan. There are so many frightening things involved, including the iconic score, and it's just a well-freaking-made movie. I tend to agree that it is one of, if not the scariest films ever made. My number four is Toby Hooper's 1974 The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. When Sally finds out that her grandfather's grave may have been vandalized, she and her brother Franklin, along with their friends, venture to investigate. A detour leads them to a house of horrors that belongs to a demented family of cannibals and the chainsaw-wielding man known only as Leatherface. This movie is fucked up. Up. Some of you may disagree with me, but it shot almost too real for me, like I'm watching a snuff film. It was certainly done this way intentionally, as it is a bit of an exploitation movie, but it's so disturbing. I honestly don't doubt that somewhere down a dark, beaten path in a place no one goes near, there could be people out there living like the Sawyer family. The fact that I could someday get lost and run across a group of insane people is a scary yet truly real notion. For being so grainy, the cinematography can be shockingly good at times, and it even has one of my favorite shots in all of horror, with Leatherface madly swinging his chainsaw around as the sun begins to rise. The kills are brutal, especially the hammer to the head and meat hook, but brilliantly enough, you see hardly any blood. In a movie that includes the words Chainsaw Massacre, you'd think you're in for a bloodbath, but that is not the case, and I love it. While I also love practical gore effects, you don't always need them to be scary. Leatherface is an unnerving killer thanks to that mask he wears made of human flesh, an idea that was inspired by real-life murderer Ed Gein, who skinned his victims and did all sorts of shit with them. It's also because of him that anytime I hear a chainsaw start up, I immediately get scared shitless. The final dinner scene at the Sawyer house is without a doubt the most anxiety-inducing scene in any movie I've ever seen. The acting, editing, and excessive screaming make me feel like I'm going absolutely insane and that I'm trapped with these madmen. No question that it's a classic exploitation film. My number three is Ridley Scott's 1979 Alien. After receiving a distress call from a nearby planet, the crew of the Nostromo investigate only to discover a hive of alien eggs. When one emerges and attacks a crewmate, the group unknowingly brings a new danger on board after rescuing him. This is suspense building at some of its greatest, a haunted house movie that takes place in space. That's a comparison I've always heard for this film and I couldn't agree more. People trapped in a confined area with a malicious creature, but this group can't simply run out of the house to escape. The crew of the Nostromo is very likable, with Dallas, Ripley, Lambert, Brett, Kane, and Ash. Although one of them clearly has ulterior motives in order to appease the company they're working for. Building up their venture to the distress call is tense, then when they stumble upon the eggs and facehugger, things go from zero to a hundred quickly. But when the facehugger dies and the crewmate wakes up, everything seems fine. Then the chestburster scene shocks the fuck out of everyone and things have now gone from zero to a thousand. This movie does such a good job building up the intensity, paying it off, then cooling you down, only to hit you in the face with a brick. You'll find many scenes where you catch yourself holding your breath. The set and creature designs by H.R. Geiger are some of the most memorable put to screen. He clearly had some passion for sexuality, and a lot of his designs reflect that, especially for the alien itself. Speaking of, the xenomorph is terrifying. It's such a brilliant, scary, intimidating look that's like part human, machine, and animalistic. Ripley, performed by Sigourney Weaver, is such a badass character that knows how to keep her shit together, form plans to keep everyone safe, and eventually fight back. The final act includes one of the scariest moments that is so unexpected when you think it's all good. The greatest sci-fi horror film ever made. My number two is Steven Spielberg's 1975 Jaws. After several shark attacks, new police chief in town Martin Brody begs the mayor to close down the beaches, but he refuses with tourists due to come in and boost their revenue. This leads Brody to recruit shark expert Matt Hooper and old boat captain Quint to go out hunt down, and kill the shark. Yes, this absolutely qualifies as a horror film. I don't care what 
any of you say. Some may call it an action adventure, but horror is definitely an aspect as well. I've always thought this film was a masterpiece in terms of filmmaking, which is crazy since Spielberg's production on it was disastrous at times and could have ruined his career before it began. Filming out at sea proved to be a difficult task, and the shark was consistently breaking down when needed the most. This led to them not showing the shark that much, but that worked to their benefit. What you don't see, or what little you do see, makes you paint a picture in your head because the unknown is just as frightening as the monster popping right in your face. When you do see the shark, it can come off as too fake, but I think it holds up 45 years later and is still better looking than any shark movie that came after it. The lovability of Brody, Hooper, and Quint as a group, hunting it down, does make it a fun adventure. Brody, the new guy in town, afraid of water, and a bit naive, is the character we can relate to as outsiders. He's not perfect, so to watch him grow into the hero through the trials he's put through is well done. Hooper, played by Richard Dreyfuss, is hilarious, and Robert Shaw as Quint is a fun, crazy character that gives one of the best monologues ever about the USS Indianapolis. So to reiterate, yes, I do think this qualifies as horror, and it's one of the best films made, period. And my number one shouldn't come as a shock. John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween. Fifteen years after murdering his sister, Michael Myers escapes from a sanitarium and returns to his hometown of Haddonfield to stalk new victims on Halloween night. I seriously don't know how much more I can talk about this movie after my full review of it and ranking it number one on 31 on 31. It's my favorite horror movie of all time, my favorite movie of all time, and probably my favorite John Carpenter movie in competition with The Thing. A simple idea was taken with a shoestring budget and relatively unknown cast and made into one of the most well-known horror films films ever. Myers is a freaky killer with a plain white mask that seems realistic but has a supernatural edge that makes him a boogeyman, making him even scarier. It's a slow burn, but all the stalking moments are creepy, the soundtrack enhances the movie's effectiveness, and all the suspense building has satisfying payoffs. It's shot wonderfully by Dean Cundey, and the performances are decent, but Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis will always be the standout role. The finale is one of my favorites in all of horror and ends very forebodingly. It's cliche, but Halloween is without question my favorite horror film of the 1970s. But let me know what you guys think. Disagree with some of my picks? Don't like where I placed some of them? Did I forget some of your favorites? Well, leave me your top 10 in the comments. This is just a list of my favorites. I'm not saying this is the definitive rank of horror in the 70s, so don't get all uppity and just have fun with it. Don't forget to subscribe and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Links to those are in the description. I will be covering my favorite horror of the 80s, but I just realized that next Friday is November 13th. I think I'll be going for a hike that day. Alone. I'm sure I'll be fine. So until then, peace.